Welcome to the Procrastinaria, my name is Jan and today we are playing EU4 as Pomerania. We're going to continue where we left off. We're still waiting for our aggressive expansion to go down. A few people want military access, why not? It improves their opinion of us, so yes, for all I care. I was looking into the history of Pomerania while between the last episode and this one, even before the last episode, because I had a little bit of time to look at it, and it's it's actually an interesting topic. I mean, Pomerania itself doesn't exist till... The Duchy of Pomerania doesn't exist till the 12th century, and then stays a duchy till 1637. More or less, it does... There are kings of Pomerania in between, but I don't quite understand how it works. It's a bit complicated. I decided to take a look, because it's interesting to know about the game you're playing. Um, I should know that in 1637 Pomerania ceases to exist because the house of Pomerania dies out and it then split between Brandenburg and Sweden. I mean Sweden! I would understand Poland, but Sweden? Okay, if they must. There's a new king in Brandenburg. Albert the ninth, no, the fourth von Hohenzollern. As I was saying, I'm gonna continue playing while we talk about this. Just so you know. Um, as I was saying, the Pomerania sites existing in the 12th century. And it's rules by, ruled by the House of Griffin. Which, I, I took a look and our house is called the House of Grief. G-R-Y-F. Which I haven't noticed anywhere really properly. Why did I find King Arthur the Third? but okay. Uh... I didn't find that way of spelling the House of Grief. It's spelled Griffins. And the mythological picture which we also have on our coat of arms. Or Griffin, G-R-E-I-F-E-N. In German and... I can't pronounce the Polish one. Griffici? G-R-Y-F-I-C-I. As... Uh, I, I just found don't, those spellings of the word. It's... I don't, I'm not quite sure, but it could be. Um, it actually, the first king was Bartislav I in the 12th century. It actually, in that time, there was a phenomenon, let's call it. It's called, it's called Ostzindlung, which is basically means German eastward expansion or colonization, which the culture of Pomerania at that point becomes more or less Germanic. Except for a few Slavic tribes. The Ven the Wen the Wends, the Wens, the Wiens were um the main culture here, but they became extinct. Family secret. The first time you brush it off, but when it happens the second and the third time you do begin to wonder. Why are people laughing at you when they think you can't hear them? After you've asked around far more than a bit, you finally manage to get an answer out of a chambermaid. It appears that your heir has been running about town in a most unchristian fashion and that your family is now becoming the laughing stock of Europe. We can scold him publicly, lose some prestige, or break the claim strength of heir. We're gonna scold him. We want him to be a strong heir. Continue on. Cardinal is no longer loyal to us. Well, we're going to rectify that immediately. I forgot we had Cardinals. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah. Talking about the colonization, at that point, the um, culture kind of became Germanic and what we know now, which... Here it says it's Pomeranian, which... I don't know which culture group it belongs to. Do -de -do -de -do -de -do -de. Yeah, part of Germanic. Makes sense. It is Germanic, more or less. A little bit Slavic, but mostly Germanic. It's actually... Then I went to look and... Pomerania was a weird duchy, it had several dukes at once. Now, they were splitting the lands between them, so technically lands involved Pomeran. Pomerania in this game in 1444 with Duke Vartislav the Ninth, which only ruled West Pomerania, which is technically only Vork Pomeran. Which is weird. But okay. If they must. Um, and I should mention, there is something, um, the name... Pomerania actually derives from Pomer, um, which is a Slavic thing. It's a Slavic phrase. It basically means land by the sea or land at the sea. I've kind of seen both the countries decide. So, yeah. Land by the sea, land from the sea, land next to the sea, land at the sea, whatever. 
Which is true, because it was at the sea. Uh, and all the towns were more or less near previous Slavic settlements, the Germanic towns, but not on top of the, them, but kind of close. Which was strange, but it worked for them. Now, <sighs> Pomerania didn't have one single king in the entire duchy, meaning War Pomeranian State and Hinder Pomeranian in this game. Didn't have it till 1478, which was 10 years ago. Um, and that was basically Duke Bogislaw the Tenth, which actually united the entire thing. We have a new tech, Naval Ambitions. Naval morale goes up and colonial range goes up with the next. Uh, naval ambitions with an extra boost to naval morale. Our sailors will conquer the waves and rule the seas, while our colonists will be able to draw to brave the dark corners of the world, finding new settlements further from home than ever before. Fantastic! New tech is always good. We're going to pay, pay off the rest of our loans uh, before we do anything crazy with our money. Some of you have been going, well, but you should spend money on improvements. Well, I know, but <sighs> I don't like having loans. I hate having them in real life and I hate having them in the game. Um, but let's get on with the history of Pomerania. And the history of Pomerania was kind of littered with war. Mostly wars with Brandenburg. And then there were wars with Silesia. And then they allied with the Teutons against Poland. Which uh, is bad. It just sounds bad, doesn't it? We actually were allies with the Teutons, and more than once in actual history, but we defeated them here. We can have another technology. Military technology, pike and shoot. The arquebus was easy to use as a weapon, but was also inaccurate and slow to fire, leaving its user van voluble to cavalry charges. Blending with pikemen allowed arquebuses to fire and then fall back to, the, to be shielded by pikemen when enemy cavalry and infantry appeared. We can training field matches, military tactics plus 0 0.25, combat width plus 1, which is good, infantry fire, fire plus 0 0.25, and cavalry shock plus 1. We will take it, we will level up, we will be good. We are now way ahead, ahead of our neighbors when it comes to military tech, so. Except Mecklenburg, Mecklenburg is doing okay. On pause and carry on. Now, um, I'm not going to talk about the wars Pomerania had before 1444. Well, technically I will. Uh, we'll we'll kind of look at the war that started about, um, that started in 1423. Just because it applies to 1444 and the time around that, because I think it's important that we kind of see the historical part of things other than what the game shows us, because the game doesn't really show us a lot. Also, we're going to hire another advisor when we have the money for him. Uh, we don't have a good one. Task, 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 task. Diplomatic reputation. I would rather have diplomatic reputation the better relations more time. Uh, but yeah, we're not going to look at the wars before 1444, except for the one in four that started in 1423, because um, we can go into de them into detail later in the let's play or in the next episode, but this episode I kind of want to focus on what happened around the start of the game because I didn't then. Um, so technically there was a war. We allied with Brandenburg and the tech, it was a war with Brandenburg and the Hanseatic League and uh, uh, the Hanseatic League, the Hanseatic League is the Hansa. We have a disagreeing advisor. He has been faith been a faithful servant so far, but now he seems to have grown too incident. He dares to denounce the great king's policies, and he recently did so in public in front of four ambassadors. Even if he's right, we should let, shouldn't let that become a habit. He could have a point, we lose some prestige, we gain some 33% cha chance to gain diplomatic, admin, or military power, or we can kill him. But we're gonna let him have a point. And our relations with Sweden went up to 100. Uh, so, we're gonna quickly take a look you wouldn't be vassals. You're still afraid of me. Uh, <laughs> what are we going to do with our advisor? We're gonna send him to improve our relations with Lithuania. Which we already have a bit, but improve them a bit more, it won't hurt. What was I saying? Oh yeah, 
we went ward with Brandenburg in the Hanseatic League, the Hansa. Which technically... It I will explain this, because it's slightly complicated. Um, because in 1423, Pomerania again, after the alliance with the Teutons against Poland, alliance with the Teutons again, and goes to war with Brandenburg and the Hansa. Which, okay, I get it. Those are worthy opponents. They've always, they've been, his Brandenburg and Pomerania have been historical rivals throughout history. Um, since the beginning of Pomerania, uh, and they go to war. And in 1525, Mecklenburg and Poland join that war, which is good. Yes, we think so. And they join that war and join us in that war, and we invade Brandenburg. Yay! And then two years later, a peace is signed. Yay! In what is called the Treaty of Templin, which. The Treaty of Templin is another complicated thing, because in the Treaty of Templin, from what I look at the maps, Neumark is still Brandenburgian, which in 1444 here it isn't, it's complicated, I'm not really sure how they did that, but okay. Uh, Hansa is a rival? Maybe we should finally take this. Who are they allies with? Sweden and Utrecht. We could take Lubeck. We could. We probably should. It's Hanoverian, which uh, I'm having a problem with. Or we could finally turn on Brandenburg. On Bohemia. Bohemia would be better. <sighs> I would like to go Poles. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to. We're going to go improve relations in Denmark again, see what we can get out of them again. I don't like this. I don't like this. Uh, but as I was saying, there was the Treaty of Templin, which is complicated because Neumark is still Brandenburgian then, which is in 1427. Um, and it doesn't really ever change to the Teutons again, from what I can see, before 1444. So it's a bit, I don't quite understand why the beginning of the game Neumark is Teutonic, but okay. Um, and basically, the Treaty of Heaven, I don't, other than what happens to Pomeran, I didn't really see what happens to everyone else because in uh, Pomerania, uh, we get parts in Hinterpomeran of uh, Scharestolp. I think that in Hinterpomeran could slightly be in Staten as well. Um, I couldn't really figure out where on the map they are, but I think that in Hinterpomeran. To know that in um, modern times, Pomerania is split uh, by this river, more or less, which is um, the Oder. So, parts of it are in Poland, parts of it are in Germany, which you should know. Well, I'm assuming you guys know. <laughs> I assume too much. To repay another loan? Uh, repaying loans is good for us, it actually gives us money. Uh, gives us a bigger income at the end. But yeah, so we get some lands in the Pomeranian city that were occupied by someone. I don't can't really remember who, but I think they were occupied by Brandenburg in the previous war. It's bizarre. Uh, it's some of these things as you, as you look at them, they can get quite complicated, especially these historical treaties. I've always find them complicated, but it's it's weird. It's like there's the Treaty of Rapallo and the Treaty of London here in uh, um, between Italy and Austria during the First and Second World War and there's and um, during the First World War and there's weird division of these lands it's biz some of these things are really really strange and they're really really hard to understand uh, but yeah so but there was, in 1444, there was a twist! Um, when Pomerania and Brandenburg again in went to war together and invaded Mecklenburg. Nothing wrong with that, I don't really know how that war ended. Um, I didn't research it enough. I was like, okay, allies. But then in 1444... In 1444, or 1445, depends on which sources you look at. Pomer uh, Brandenburg goes to war with Pomerania. Oh yeah, it does. Mm-hmm. 
War. Yep. So, the beginning of this game is not historic. Well, it is in parts, but... What was that dude? I forgot. Oh, in Lithuania. Who now loves us? They would be our ally. Ah, yes! Yes! Uh, as I was saying, Brandenburg goes to war with... Um, I know it's costing me diplomatic relations, by the way. I'm fully aware of that fact. I'm fully aware we're going to lag behind in uh, diplomatic technology because of it, but... We'll figure something out. Uh, as I was saying, yeah, Brandenburg goes to war with Pomerania over um, Ukmark. Uh, or Ukmark, I'm not really sure how it's pronounced, but... It's somewhere... So... I can improve relations with Poland, see if we can't get them on our side. Uh, they go to war over Uckermark, which I'm not really sure where it is, but um, from what I understand, if I'm getting this correctly, it should be this part of the world? Yeah, call this a sign of nobility. Nobility cannot be bought. My lord, one of your advisors has suggested selling of titles of nobility to anyone who can afford to pay. It would bring in lots of money if we do, but it would devalue the idea of nobility and perhaps aside the existing aristocratic families. Should we do this? Uh, gold is a sign of nobility, we gain money, or nobility can't be bought and we gain stability. We're going to gain stability because we're in minus stability and I don't like being in minus stability. Zero is fine. Uh, as I was saying, Brandenburg goes to war, and I think Ukemark is either somewhere here, it's, it's somewhere, I'm not really sure where the region of Ukemark is, but we go to war over it. When it's accepted peace with Austria, good for them. Austria is expanding way to Italy, which they tend to do uh, sometimes. Not al always, but sometimes. They need to get their ass kicked by someone. But yeah, they go to war over Ukamark, which at the end, uh, it ends in 1448. What? After the start of the game and we're not at war technically? Huh? Doesn't matter. It ends with the um, Treaty of Preslau, where Ukamark is split into... Um, two parts and the south of it goes to Brandenburg and the north of it goes to Pomerania and if case of the house of Griffin dying out Brandenburg would inherit the north of Uckermark which makes sense I mean inheritance treaties are common there is a, there was a treaty between the Dukes of Celia and um, the house of Habsburg um, partaking quite a big amount of land in uh, the Balkan areas uh, Slovenia and a bit of Austria Production stifled. Our producers became complacent as our use of Smithian economics led to our production techniques being so advanced. Pomerania gets production stifled until, well, for five years. Production efficiency minus 10%, or it, we might get a bit of inflation. Now, our inflation is still quite a bit high. It does go down a bit every year, so um, we're going to go with inflation. It's going to... The income is going to be a bit... But uh, I think we can live with that. This is occupied by Hess now. But yeah, uh, it's a, the history of Pomerania is a bit bizarre and the start of the game doesn't actually... It doesn't go in historically, which is in... Because in 1444, Pomerania was at war with Brandenburg and that isn't reflected at the beginning of the game. Neither is... Um, the beginning of the game doesn't reflect the fact that there were multiple dukes of Pomerania, which I get. I get them not being multiple Dukes of Pomerania because that would make it a lot more complicated and it would probably have to be split up into... Pomerania would have to be split up into several Pomeranias, which were all somehow inter-allied allied somehow. Bizarre. But, yeah, that's what um, goes on. So, I'm not really sure uh, if I should, how I should continue with these kind of historical factoids. Um, we just spent 20 minutes talking about this one, which is the general outlook of Pomerania, which I think is important. It's important to know about the country you are playing, mostly because even if you're not playing it as, his, as it historically would have evolved, which usually in EU4 you don't, you just want a big, powerful empire, or you focus on trade or, or something, well, that depends on what tickles your fancy, but 
uh, I think it's important to kind of know a at least a little bit about the country you're playing. And from Irania being the country we're playing, I wanted to, to kind of share a little bit of information with you. Especially before the 1444 starts, which when we take took control. So yeah. Technically in 1444 we should be at war with Brandenburg, but we were not. And <laughs> we actually became allies. Bizarre. This episode kind of flew by. I, I do like talking um, historical facts, so I'm probably most likely going to continue talking historical facts, because why not? I mean, we have the internet, which is an abundant source of knowledge, and it's not, it's not that difficult for me to go in and check some things out and decide if I want to talk about them or not. And Because I do do it constantly anyways when I'm not recording. I do like reading up on things, so why not? Maybe the next next time we can tackle something more in the Pomeranian's past and kind of go through it. It should be fun. Or we might... This is slightly more difficult because these are not historical provinces as they are now and they're kind of hard to figure out, but we could... Um, a if we take a province from anyone, or a few provinces from anyone, we could... I, I can look up facts about that province and share them with you kind of historical facts about the province, and which kind of makes it a bit more interesting. But at the end of this episode, it kind of went by fast. I didn't expect it to go by so fast. Um, I hope you enjoyed the episode. If I said anything wrong, put it in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If you'd want me to continue these historical facts, also let me know. And until next time, bye-bye.